Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and in one of my classes, we just finished out building a bunch of ads and logos for vans. Yep, skate and surf shoes and stuff. Now, one of the things you see when checking out said company is its affinity for using checker patterns. And that started us off on learning Illustrator brushes and pattern brushes to build Illustrator patterns in borders. And that is what this video is all about. Yeah learning how to use brushes to create cool strokes and borders. So we'll start with this, and then we'll follow up in another video with something a little bit more complex. Yeah, that's a puzzle border. All right, let's get started. Let's go ahead and create a new document. Our document will be 1,000 points wide. By 1,000 points tall, it'll have a single artboard. And if you scroll down, we will be building in the RGB color mode. Reason is, we're going to build this to screen, not to print. If you're building to print, always go CMYK. Let's get started. Before we continue, I want to mention that we're using the Essentials Classic layout. To switch to Essentials Classic or a comparable layout, all you need to do is go to the top right corner, select Switch Workspace, and then select Essentials Classic or, of course, the workspace that you want to use. Beyond that, I want to mention that we're using Smart Guides. All you need to do to switch to Smart Guides is to go to View, Smart Guides, or select Control U. With that being said, we're going to be using the bottom center of the screen to highlight key commands, tips and tricks, and hotkey recommendations. On that note, we're building this piece on a PC. If you're using a Mac, anytime we reference the Control key, switch over to the Command key. Again, command equals control. All right, let's get started. As you can see on the top right-hand corner, this is what we're looking to build first. Again, it is a simple checkered border. How do we do that? Let's show you. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool. We'll click and release anywhere on the artboard. Once we do that, let's go ahead and create a square that is 50 points wide by 50 points tall. And then let's go ahead and copy and paste a new square right in front. How do we do that? All we need to do is with our square still selected, we go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. You can also do control C and control F. I'll be demonstrating that next. Once we do that, we need to move our square straight underneath. The way we do that is we're going to hold our shift key and then arrow down five times. The reason we hold our shift key is by holding shift and pressing a directional key, it moves elements in 10 point increments. Piece of cake makes it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool now and let's select both of our squares and let's do the process again. We'll select both pieces. Let's copy and paste in front, hold our shift key and arrow to the right five times. Let's deselect. There you go, we've got our squares done. Let's continue. Let's go ahead with our selection tool still on. Let's drag across all four of our shapes just like that. And let's change our fill to black and our stroke to transparent. Once done, let's deselect our shape. And then let's select our top left shape and our bottom right shape. All we need to do is select our top left shape and then hold our shift key. That allows us to select multiple shapes. And then let's go ahead and switch the fill to white. All we need to do is double click our fill, change our fill to white, click OK. Let's go ahead and deselect. That's exactly what we're going for. Let's go ahead and make that border. First thing we do is we select our checkered pattern and then we're going off to the right here and we are going to go directly beneath swatches. We're going to select brushes from our right toolbar. If you don't have that right toolbar or can't locate the brushes window, all you need to do is go to Window, Brushes, or F5. Once your brushes window is up and your element is selected, all you need to do is go to the window, click on the drop down, and select New Brush. Once there, go to the bottom, select Pattern Brush, click OK. Let's go ahead and name our pattern. We'll call it Checker Pattern. And then let's talk about this just a little bit. Notice we've got our scale set to fixed. That's perfectly fine right there. We are set at 100%. We're going to change that in a little bit. 
and we've got spacing at a percentage two. The spacing means the spacing between each individual pattern shape. Notice if we switch our spacing to 10%, you can take a look directly underneath for a preview of that spacing. With that in mind, let's go ahead and switch it back to zero. That's exactly what we want. Now directly beneath that, we've got how we're going to set up our shape. If we hover over the first one, for instance, that is our outer corner tile. Notice how it's cutting off. Now take a look at our side tile. That's exactly how we want it right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next one. We'll select inner corner tile. We'll click on that and we will scroll down to auto slice. Right? Take a look at what happens to our inner corner. There you go. That's exactly what we want right there. Beyond that, we don't need to flip our element. We want to keep our fit at stretch to fit. And we don't need any colorization or key color changes. So let's go ahead and click OK. And there we go. We've created our new brush. Let's see what it looks like. First thing we're going to do is we're going to delete our pattern. We don't need that anymore as it exists in our brush pattern. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to click and hold our rectangle tool and we'll select our ellipse tool. Click anywhere on the artboard and let's create an ellipse that is 300 points wide by 300 points tall. We'll click OK. Just to keep things nice and symmetric, we're going to align our circle horizontally and vertically to center. If you don't see your align tool, Again, all you need to do is go to Window, Align, or select Shift F7. Once we've got that, all you need to do is select your brush from the brush menu. You can see it right here. We'll scroll down to it. We'll click on it. Let's go ahead and deselect. Just take a look at what it looks like. That looks pretty good. The only issue is notice how big the brush pattern is. We want to make that smaller. The good thing is we don't need to make a new pattern for that. All we need to do is play with the pattern itself. Here's how we do that. Let's go ahead and do that. To do that, all we need to do is double click on our pattern. Notice we don't have to select our shape because any changes to our pattern is going to affect any shape if we so desire. Now that we're here, all we need to do is play with the scale. Now we can drag our scale smaller and notice we've got our preview selected by the way. Let's go ahead and drag it smaller. And once we release, take a look at what happens to our pattern so we can see how we want it to look. So of course we can drag our percentage down. We can also drag over our percentage and write in a new percentage. Let's try 50% and then tab off. That looks pretty good. Still a little too big. What we can also do is we can just click on it and let's use our directional keys to arrow down to 30%. That looks excellent right there. Let's go ahead and click off of it. Note the warning that comes up straight away. Notice that it says that brush is in use and some strokes may have overridden its options. That's okay. We definitely want to apply the changes to the existing brush strokes. Let's click apply to strokes. That's exactly what we're looking for right there. We're done. Well done. Now that you know how to use brushes and pattern brushes, use this as inspiration to create your own borders and shapes. Need inspiration? Check out the follow-up video to this one. Yep, that's a puzzle border. Link below. All right, if you have any questions, comments, or critiques, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that just a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace. <music>